Hello, Matthew. Hi. Thanks for <laughs> you know joining me today. We'll have definitely a great roast. Uh, oh yes. Oh yes. So I've I've been spending a lot of time roasting yesterday afternoon. Uh, so I hope you sat down and, and ready to be roasted. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it, it will be great. So uh, as we already wasted a few minutes of our viewers' time, uh, let's move to the roast directly. The, the first thing that we do is we take care of everything below true density. First of all, we fix all of these things, right? And you can say the, the target site here has zero words in bold. But the mean average has between 22 and 65 words in bold. So we're way below even the, 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 the lowest barrier to entry, right? Coming down further, things here, paragraph elements, um, we're, we're above the average just. So uh, we would take care of it. But I wouldn't consider it super high priority, but, you know, we're pretty anal about things. We would take care of that. Uh, and it's just a case of fixing each of these things here. Once each of them are fixed, you then publish your updates, clear your cache, and then we're going to refresh a report up here. And then we're going to come down and focus on all these true density phrases. And we take care of all of the phrases. We don't bother with the words or the numbers, but all of the phrases we make sure that everything is all good, all good, all good, all good, all good, all the way down to the bottom. Um, that takes a bit of time. Uh, it's quite annoying to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And so, sometimes it's easier than others. Looks like you've got some uh, easy work on your hands right here uh, to, 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 to go through that. Um, but overall, in, in, in my opinion, um, the site itself needs a, a, a better look with, with the design, the layout, how it flows. This image is not working here, here. It's not been updated since 2018, you know, by admin. Like, who's that? Like, that's nobody, you know, um, in reviews. It, 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 just from a presentation perspective, it, there's a lot of room for improvement, especially when we compare that against the competing results, you know, each, none of which are perfect. Each of them have their faults, um, but collectively they are better than what you're trying to rank here. So that's where I'd start. I'd fix all of that, come into Surfer, and you'll see success there. Not just across this page, but across all pages as you improve them. Quick question, Matthew. Uh, have you considered going in rounds uh, for the True Density Audit? So what, what I generally do is like in the first phase, I'm just trying to fix uh, the phrases that I'm completely missing. So the red errors, basically. Mm -hmm. And then after a month uh, or depending on how much time do I have, how much time can I spend on the website, then I go back and tweak it further if it's required. I'm wondering what do you think about this idea? Um, I, I just do all of them. And when I say... I do all of them. What I mean is somebody else in the <laughs> team does all of them. So that, you know, that that's not an operational problem that I, I have yeah. to deal with. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you have a more efficient way to share, please share it because no. it's, it's not my department. <laughs> if you have resources, then definitely do them all. Do all the things. Absolutely. That, that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that 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 that's the truth of the matter. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. So uh, is, is, I can't actually see the chat, uh, but is there any questions coming up from there? Uh, any any anything well, that I need to address? Most of the questions were about what the hell was going on with this eco, and basically we have Oliver Smith with us who figured that out because uh, I had two uh, audio streams. Uh, applied to the OBS, one was coming from the camera and the other was coming from the sharing screen. Absolutely intuitive way. Uh, so uh -huh. the voice is yeah, carried you, with the screen share. Maybe, maybe you should stick to building SEO tools. Uh. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I, w I, w I would love uh, to have some kind of, uh, uh, you know, professional training on hosting webinars. <laughs> um, okay, so no questions. Yeah. Oh yeah, one question. One question is coming. Okay. 
Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, he's probably typing. Take, hydrate yourself. I will do so as well. It's a pretty damn long question. As it's still being written. I will hold on for like, okay. How long we should monitor after server optimized changes? How long do you wait for the results? Okay, so we, we, we make the changes to the page, Google Search Console, inspect the URL, pull it through there, so Google re-indexes it. And sometimes you see the changes within 24 hours, uh, sometimes within a week. But we like to see them, you know, certainly within two weeks, we're, we're paying attention then. Okay, well, if it's not that, then uh, let's add and some the links. Tip, or and the tip for figuring out if page got indexed? Uh, just do it in Google Search Console. You, you, uh -huh. you, you paste the URL in the top, inspect the URL, and then does it request indexing mm -hmm. the, the, the text on the button? You hit that, and then and that's it. Yeah, but uh, it takes a while between you ask uh, for indexation and then if it's indexed. Yeah, we we um we 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 did a SEMrush steal recently, and we stole it within 24 hours. Okay. In the featured snippet using using Surfer SEO and, and featured snippet theft. Um, so it, it comes quick. Yeah, fair enough. But not always, right? Not always. Uh, like, uh, th there's so many other factors mm -hmm. that are going in around that. And it could just be that. So we have another was, question in this topic. Enough. So if that was an informational instead of an affiliate, uh, would you follow the same steps, the same process? Um, I always, everything I, all of my SEO processes start with this, right? Like manual observation. What do I see? Take a step back. What's currently ranking? You know, we can't see all of the factors of Google's algorithm, but what we can see is the input, the search term, and the output, the search results, right? So there's a lot to be learned by studying the output of the search results, uh, whether that's intent, uh, the type of content you should be producing, you know? If you're looking at a search result and it's nine e-commerce pages ranking, well, mm, right in like a list of products page, you might not get there because Google's telling you they want e-commerce results. Um, so you're facing an uphill battle in that scenario. I'm not saying it's a battle you can't win through content and links because you can, but it's a significantly bigger challenge because you're challenging the intent against Google's what already telling you what they want. So um, no matter what we're doing, what, whatever we're ranking, we always start with manual observation. We always look at the search results. We always look at what's ranking. Um, you know, we look at links as one of the very last things in, in, in it. Um, just what's ranking? What do we like from a human perspective? Why do we think it's ranking? Usually the top three results are the top three results for a reason. And if you can learn what those reasons are just by looking and then apply those to your page, you save yourself an awful lot of hassle and investment and time and stress trying to fight your way up, up with the results, right? Um, so look what Google wants, give it to them. That's it. Yeah. So let's let's move on to the second, maybe. Mm. How do you feel about it? Um, we have some other questions, but properly, pr probably we will run out of time this way. Okay. Um, if there's any you feel that are super relevant, just jump them in. Mm. Locksmith Berkeley, 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 Berkeley in the US, right? California, yeah, I guess. I guess. Um, are they are they in the house? Um, so I, I asked uh, people before, be, like telling them that we will roast Dave's sites like a few hours ago. But maybe, maybe, maybe we have the owner, uh, the locksmith guy. Uh... Okay, so um, lots of opportunity to optimize here. Um, first of all, look at this. Zero in number three. One domain rating in number five. Oh, yeah, look at these. We'll have some of that, right? Um, Great opportunity here. We've got a number two domain rating. Um, lots of opportunity to to optimize as well. Um, Yelp queries uh, number one and two, but our next nearest like for like competitor homepages is in number three, right? So zero, 
rate in there, 78 optimization, two here, 64. So I think we can do something about that. Um, let's first take a look at the target site. Now, this is offensive visually. Um, it, there's no trust signals. There's no phone number. If I'm looking for a locksmith, it's usually because of, I'm in trouble, right? I need you right now. Um, I, I, I'm not requesting a call back and filling out a form to request a call. No, I'm coming to your site. I'm pressing on the phone number and I'm calling you, right? So the intent of this site is way off from the real user experience in the real world. There's, there's, a, there's a complete mismatch between what the user wants and what's being presented here. Um, you know, I'm not seeing any trust signals here above the fold, any address, any picture of the business, the owner, any reason for me to not think you're just some like anonymous spammer dude that's harvesting my data. Um, coming down here looks a lot better, but uh, Room for improvement, blue text on is not readable here, like when I mouse over it is. Now it's not. Um, okay, you know, is this actually a commercial premises or is this just like a fake photo you put a logo on here? Um, when I saw this photo, I was like, oh, yeah, for sure it's fake. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's actually your office, but if it is, uh, I'm sorry, but it looks fake. Uh, you need like, Install some signs or something, man. Um, that was my overall view of the site. I didn't feel safe and secure. I didn't feel like the service would be safe and secure. Um, we were missing an awful lot of trust signals to convince me to be your customer, right? Um, moving into competitor sites. Uh, yeah, that's a similar site. That's a similar site. We pick another, yeah, that one. So this one, um, right away above the fold, you've got the phone number in two locations here and here. There's a lot of trust signal building uh, above the fold. The payment that they accept, they're open 24 hours. It ticks all the things that you're looking for when you're in a panic and in a rush, right? Coming down, the content's much clearer. Good use of bullet points and internal links. Nice graphics here. It's it feels a lot more trustworthy, right? It's it's much better on the eye. There's the the graphics are clean. There's a reason this is the top ranked like for like result when you're looking at it, right? This one, <laughs> this one, I've got to be quick because oh, that this is yellow, ugly. That yellow, right? If they change that yellow to not yellow. <laughs> I don't know what color, but not yellow. But if they change that and you look at it like that, so you just see the blue in the middle, it's still offensive, but not as offensive. Um, skipping over the offensive, again, phone number, tap to call. Uh, it's quite obviously a real business. There's, you know, the, the, this looks like the kind of old timer that's been in business since like 1922, you know, like he's got his jag outside. It's, it, you know, it's a real business when you're here. It feels like it. Um, there's a lot of trust signals going on there. Uh, unfortunately, they completely destroy any chance of that because of the offensive um, yellow. You, which you see the contrast like between that. this white uh, content and uh, blue background. That's I, really hurt I my eyes. Yeah, I can't do that. They can't do it anymore. But they had all the right elements, right? Just like it looked like I designed it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, BerkeleyLocksmith.com. Um, interesting here, they're trying to rank for like locksmith terms, but above the fold, they seem more interested in selling security products. Now, I might be naive to the niche, but I assume if I'm searching for a locksmith, I'm not searching for security products. I'm searching for a locksmith because the keys are in the car or I locked myself out or I broke the key in the lock or right, something like that. So. I felt like they they were missing a point here, but up here after our emergency service, phone numbers, different locations, um, kind of a bit of a, a cookie cutter kind of design. Um, but I feel like they 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 completely missed the mark um, in the intent of the search term that they're trying to rank for. Um, this 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 I was very happy to review. 
because when you see a site like this ranking in the top 10, uh, you know that it's a, it's it's pretty easy to to to, to drive past, right? Um, very simple site, short on content. However, trust elements, phone number, right? You can't click it or anything, but there's an address. It's 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 old school, right? This website was probably built by the dude that come and fix your locks. You know, it looks like that. Um, but the fact that we're seeing this ranking so well is a great sign because it means that if we just pay attention to our content and design a little bit, uh, we can easily jump ahead here. So do you feel like um, the age uh, plays a big role uh, for this site? It, you see, it's even not HTTPS. So I'm wondering if the page is like HTTPS 10 years old um, or maybe 20. Copyright 2007, last updated February 13th, 2012. Oh, God. Um, uh, this site might be older than some of our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaur, definitely. 2007, right? So, uh, well, um, so overall, right? When you see this kind of site in the results, you know you're onto a winner. Would you would you um, take this site to the compassion, uh, looking at its content, or would you exclude it just because it's so poor and aged? That probably some other factors play play significant I, role in. I this would ranking. include it. I would include it because it is what is actually ranking. Mm -hmm. Despite my putting my biases into that, it's like for like in terms of intent. It's a locksmith service. There are other results here like, like uh, the Yelp, right? Um, that that are like lists of locksmiths. But these sites are all homepage locksmith sites, right? So they are like for like, despite the terrible amount of content, what that actually means is that we can probably uh, spend less time, less investment on content because Google's telling us that this is satisfactory. Sure. Um, we know that we can do better. So probably, so probably the audit uh, should start with excluding the Yelps as they have this different uh, business model than our locksmith sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and... If we just come back in comparison of the target site and how how much it misses a mark um, with phone number, trust signals, design, uh, all this wasted white space. Um, there's so many other trust signals that they could, you know, we, really we want up above in the fold a photo of the business and the phone number and how we can help. And, you know what? Um, I think it may be a rank and rent website. It's like full of stock photos, uh, no contact number, and maybe they're just selling leads. Yeah, but even so, like getting a phone number set up, you can use a service like CallRail takes, what, three minutes? Like, if you don't want to answer the phone, just route it to the voicemail and have the MP3 sent your email. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, or, 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 ha or you can have the calls route to the other numbers that you're selling the leads to if that's what you're doing. And you can use call rail to track all of that and, and, and how much you're charging per lead and per phone call. Like, but the simple fact of the matter is if you need a locksmith, you're not filling out a form on a website. Right. I'm not stood there in front of my house going, hi, I live at the type out I did. I'm not doing it. Shaking doing hands. It. Imagine no, typing an email. I'm closing that. I'm going to the next one. Yeah. And the first one that looks probably anything like this. I'm, I'm going to. So that's that's the the, the, the biggest issue. Um, it misses the mark of what it's trying to rank for. So, so this I is the best benchmark, joke. right? Uh, those yeah, guys and, with and, and 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 when you look here, the the look, this is ranking with a domain right rating uh, a domain score zero. Yeah. Right. So your strongest competitor is 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 spanking you with a weaker domain and weaker weaker link profile. Mm -hmm. So you're missing the mark on intent. Fix that first, and then you need to come and do the surfer audit. Now, once you've fixed all of these problems, you're going to need to redo the surfer audit, and all this will be irrelevant. Um, but uh, fix it all, refresh it, um, and then again come down and have a have a look. Right now we can see we're a little bit short on word count, um, and, and we're missing a few things here. But if you've got to rework the content anyway, um, you can probably just use the uh, the content editor here, 
to to create to create the spec to create the content that you need to create update it and then come and do your audit to, to really dial down the optimization and work for everything here again we look for green ticks where possible all the way down here well i say we uh, my team <laughs> um you know what i would try I, to do in this situation probably i would just pick only this competitor ranking number three with the weakest domain and leave it as the only reference point for uh, shutting an audit here as they are pretty damn good with the content uh, they have the weakest domain high content score definitely on site is, is done properly along with those signals you mentioned so probably yes. i will just copy them just them okay yeah no, I, that's not how we we would we would approach it um but yeah it makes completely logical sense that because they're ranking with such a weak domain rating that uh why bother including these in the review when you can just hit hit this uh directly makes sense yeah. and uh easy to do in the content editor as well here um here one of, one of the interesting things here was um th this page was missing so many terms like Uh, for example, locksmiths in Berkeley, zero high security, zero uses surrounding area, zero Alameda County, zero Rexky. Like there's so many zeros here that, that, that are not being used all the way down that uh, I felt that was a, a good opportunity. But even still, even if you rank this page, it's not going to convert. You won't make any money. So um, go change the intent first and then surfer. Yeah, absolutely. When I see such a situation with so many zeros, and I'm pretty sure that making those zeros at least a mention uh, will do the job. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, if 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 you want it, you could just come in here, take care of that, and it's going to improve your ranking. It is. Um, but if you're interested in making money, uh, you got to go and fix that intent because it's it's completely whack. Uh, all all that's going to happen is that you're going to break the first page, and let's say you hit top three. Uh, You, people are going to come to your site and leave, come to your site and leave, come to your site and leave. And over time, you, you're not going to be on the first page yeah, anymore. Yeah, it drags you down. Um, the, you know, um, links, authority, content quality, they all get you to the first page. But what keeps you there is people interacting with your page and Google knowing that they're delivering the right result to their users. Um, so if you want to stay on the first page, you want to make sure that intent's right before you get on the first page. Absolutely agree. You can do it with this so-called gray hat optimization, stack those keywords in there and do nothing else, but eventually you will drop just because of the user satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any questions? Yeah, uh, not not about this particular topic, but we have some uh, uh, questions uh, like from Oliver. First question is that, uh, what would you do if you see extremely varied content lengths in the top 10, like first, long, second, short, third, long, fourth, like uh, medium-sized content, what would you do? So um, in Surfer, you can come down to words here and it'll look at the, the word count in the body. Um, as long as you're sat in this mean range, you're good. Cool. So you could have up to 2,800 words here but you could have a little as a thousand. So this is where the power of observation comes in. You use your noggin a little bit, like, um, actually we're going to look at one a little bit later where they just went way beyond the word count that the intent required. Um, so as long as you're in with, within that range and you're giving the user what they want, that's it. Okay, another question from Oliver, as I owe him a beer already, so uh, yeah, I will share more questions from him. So if a page ranks number four for the main keyword and first for a secondary keyword, which is also a money keyword, so would you risk optimizing for the primary? So probably it yes. could be optimized. Because uh, breaking that number one, you know, the difference in traffic between ranking number two and number one is like, boom. So uh, yeah, I would sacrifice a rank third or fourth ranking on a secondary keyword in order to jump to number one for the actual target keyword, which is the main focus anyway, right? Yeah. 
makes 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 sense. Uh, I think you can wrap up and move to to the next one if that's okay for you. Hey, next victor, I mean next volunteer. <laughs> um, let's have wedding photographer, London. Um, so we we leave the poker uh, keyword for the last. Um. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get into that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, that's one that needs some more time and attention. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So, wedding photographer London. Our victim is. Liam. Oh, we Not have right Liam on the chat. Hey, Liam. Liam. Yes. How are you doing, man? So, um. What is nice to see here is lots of similar sites and services ranking all these people, um, you know, all look like freelance independent photographers, all offering their wedding photography services in London. So that's good to see, right? We're seeing in the number one position, someone domain score three, our target has domain score four. So we've got some opportunity here. You can see, despite these having a higher domain score, they're only ranking third. Um, but they've got a lower content score. And this is also a list of sites, uh, a list of photographers rather than individual photographers. But Google's telling us in the number one and number two position are specific freelance photographers. Our target roast is a specific freelance photographer. Everything's in alignment, right? It's exactly kind of what we want to see in terms of opportunity. Opportunity because we've got the good domain score, opportunity because of the content score, and opportunity because of what we're currently seeing ranking, just looking at this table, right? So let's get busy. And I'm sure Liam is familiar with his competitor's sites. Um, and Let's have a look first at Liam. <laughs> is that you, Liam? Is it? I hope it is. Uh, it appears that we cannot hear Matthew, uh, or at least it's me. Matthew, are you with me? Matthew is gone. <laughs> Matthew is gone, so probably yeah, yeah. Oh, he's back. He's back. So we will just wait 30 seconds. Matthew, oh. say something, please. Hey. Hello. Yeah, Hello. you were you was frozen for a while. Uh, say something. Hello. How you doing? Yeah, we now back? it's now now we got you. Okay. Do you have my screen here? Yes, I have your screen. And Liam asked you to okay. scroll down because he is, okay. it's not him. Okay, well, um, I don't know where I cut out exactly. So here, look, the image is welcoming, it grabs you in. But we're not using the best use of the space here for any kind of call to action. We're not establishing credibility. We're not establishing authority. We're not really saying, you know, I'm Liam Smith and this is why I'm awesome, right? It, it's not there, nor is there anything for the user to then click on and, and, and engage or make an inquiry or, or see a portfolio or anything like that. Also, you've got these awards down here, which, uh, in my opinion, should be used above the fold to establish your credibility, not hidden away down here, right? Um, moving down, um, you know, we've got a lot of, I feel, wasted real estate that doesn't contribute to too much to, like, look at all of this space here we've got just to say, hello, I'm Liam, this guy, right? Like we're taking up a whole screen scroll on a 23 inch monitor. So it's probably worse on a laptop or a mobile um, just to say I'm Liam, right? Um, 
that I don't feel like you're making the best use of your screen real estate here. Um, here, the text is small, difficult to read. Um, you know, I see pretty good and I'm like, oh, squinty eye, you know. Um, and uh, typically with photography sites, um, people use lots of high res images which often leads to slow load times and such other things. Uh, so I suspect site speed will be an issue here and images aren't optimized. And down here, you know, this is your call to action, which actually disappears when you mouse over it. Well, where'd you go? <laughs> it should be like, boom, you know, like you put your mouse over it, literally like jump out the screen and punch you in the face almost. And instead it's like, oh, don't click me, you know? So um, you, you that's your first call to action as well like uh, 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 you know like i've done a lot of work there to to, to engage with you and, and sort of submit an inquiry or look at your portfolio or whatever else um this i hate spam filters like this because it makes the customer do the work and you want to remove as much friction as possible from the customer so um you can usually use an invisible honey pot or something like that to take care of this um down here Nice use of typography, just too small. It's too small. Um, here, a lot of real estate for not much. Um, and again, the text. Look at the beautiful typography here. Look at that. Beautiful. And now look at this. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like there's, 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 there's some, some work to be done. Look at this. Blah. You know, it's, it's, who's reading that? No one. Um, headers bullet points, increase a font size. Um, you can do it. It looks amazing here, right? Um, so overall, that is the, the kind of feeling of, of the site, right? Um, moving on, Emma Jane, um, really bland above the folds. There's nothing engaging, right? Liam's like, whoa, look at this dude. Uh, but yeah, choose fun. Yeah, I'm on board, but this is like... Ugh. Really? It's bland, right? Like, really, really bland. Um, it doesn't, she's also got all these like awards and been in this magazine and this, that, and the other. Doesn't really stress it. She's not establishing authority or credibility. Um, she's trying to do some internal linking to rank for destination weddings there, but with a gallery, probably won't rank. Um, again, the, the, the typography is really basic, could be a lot better. Um, all of these awards look really hidden away. Uh, what, what's wrong? You photographers like a, a bit too humble or something? Like <laughs> you're burying all your rewards down at the bottom. <laughs> uh, the brochure, look, the call to action to the brochure is just not there. It's very easy to scroll past the brochure. Look, Ooh, where's the brochure? Uh, again, text, boring. Um, similar kind of issues, right? Uh, except for, for our target site, Liam makes a much better entrance at the start. Uh, but after that's kind of similar, similar problems that we're seeing, right? Lindsay Goddard. Now, the first time you land on this, you get the first scroller, this one. So it's straight away award-winning photography, London documentary award-winning photography. Here's my portfolio. It goes straight into establishing more credibility above the fold. Now, personally, I hate these scrolly bloody light boxy things do me head in uh, much better to have complete control of your above the fold space 100 percent of the time and use that to establish your credibility who your service are introduce you and give you a call to action all in that space above the fold um coming down again a little bit shy about the the awards here should be big and bold shouting about them everyone seems to be uh, very humble in this um nice personal area but again the typography is just not there it's just text um links to the awards here and, and the things they've done which helps establish credibility both in the eyes of the user and in google but again not really shouting about it um this quote's kind of nice attracts the eye but okay some nice example photos but again here's the showing off credibility at the bottom of the page right not at the top and here's the first call to action right at the bottom there um in fact does this even work just looking at the url ah oh, you're looking yeah looking at the url at the bottom left there it didn't look like it was going to work um so 
again, similar kind of problems, right? Not establishing authority. The the text isn't really readable. Uh, sorry, they are establishing authority, but they're not doing it in the right way. First call to actions are right at the bottom here. Text that's uninteresting. Um, it's not really going to pull any, any anyone in. Most of this is probably for search engines more than anything else, right? Than the human. Um, Miki Studios, again, weak header. It doesn't really communicate what they do. Like, I'm a wedding photographer, but this is a photo and film studio. There's a mismatch there, all right? The photo is a wedding, but doesn't communicate what they do. Again, doesn't make good use above the fold, just showing off photos. Um, space in here is bad. Again, the text layout and the typography is bad. Um, awards are hidden down here. Uh, it, 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 there's no trust signals, no call to action, you know. Um, it, 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 there's a lot of work to do there. And this is, again, I'm, I'm not going to repeat, but saying the typography and layout's a little bit better, but it's small, it's hard to read. Um, again, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of work to do here. So I think Liam's problems can mostly be solved just by establishing credibility above the fold with a call to action, being clear about what you do, finding some way to integrate that with this photo because it's great. It pulls people in. We do choose fun. Um, increase the, your font size, fix your typography issues. You can do it because this section is great, you know, but you're wasting so much real estate here. Um, and you, you, can do, you can do much better there. So that's the, the, the manual roast, so to speak. The surfer audit itself, um, pretty big opportunity. And uh, I'll show you why. I'm guessing he's so we're making fun to... of keywords. Oh, I see the one. <laughs> you see it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to rank for Wedding Photographer London. And the term Wedding Photographer London is used precisely zero times on the page. That's a pretty big opportunity right there. <laughs> yep. 30 seconds job that can lift you in the top 10. Yeah. So... Look, first of all, before we dig into this, we take a, a good look at everything that we're looking at. Word count's great. We we we're way below the average for words in bold, right? We want to be we want to be touching this at least. Um, few little tweaks down here. Look, exact keywords. No exact keywords in the body, not near the H1 or the title. London wedding photographer, wedding photography, London. You see, so. Um, just some small changing the order of your words there are going to help you with your target keyword. Um, so I'd go through, make these changes down here first. And um, photography sites, you always do badly on site speed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review that in a moment. But uh, lots of opportunity in terms of an on-page optimization uh, opportunity. You're not even mentioning the target keyword on the page. So go through that take care of all these issues here, come back, refresh the page, and then go through and fix all of these. Um, you know, we're missing some essential terms, uh, award-winning. Um, I think you, you've got that in an image. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, award-winning wedding photographer in London or something like that. Uh, in the text there. Lots of opportunity uh, to, to dig through here. You see, uh, still ranking 21. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. still ranking 21. So, um, yeah, I think if you make these fixes, you, you're going to see a, a big, big boost. Um, but let's take a little look at Google Page Speed Insights and Web Page Test. Photographers um you're usually pretty ambitious with your file sizes to say the least you like high res high quality and everything else the problem is mobile phones don't and some desktops don't as well actually um now looking here um in general when we have a client that's got page speed issues if we fix them we nearly always see positive increases in search visibility nearly always like it's the first thing that we fix because it nearly always delivers improvements. As a rule of thumb, we want to see at least a 60 mobile page speed score. If you can get it to 80, great, but 60, we're like, 
yeah, we'll accept that. Um, and as suspected, uh, efficiently encoding images is uh, a, an issue. You've got some unused JavaScript, some render blocking resources that are affecting both the mobile desktop 90 and above. That's it. There's no, there's no wiggle room in that. It's got to be 90 and above. Um, and again, the, the similar issues here with your images, uh, these can be fixed. Um, well, let's take a look at web page test. Similar issues in the real world, you're loading in 14.8 seconds. Um, mm, Matthew, can you swap screens so we see it? Because now we see Surfer's Audit. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Yep. Okay. So just covering here, back page feed insights, 56 score, was it? Might change now. Okay, while well, waiting for that to load, web page test. We're showing a 14.8 second load time. This has got to be as close to three as possible. Really high time to first bite. Um, it's telling us the images need compressing. Um, Looking into the waterfall, we can see, you know, this image is taking eight seconds of the time. This is taking five and a half seconds of time. There's a lot of room for optimization here. Page speed insights. Okay, desktop this time we broke the 90s. Um, and here on the mobile, we still have the efficiently encoded images score. Oh, we got a bit of a better score here. Um, so we need to take care of that, right? Um, the easiest way to take care of that is... Um, I've got a tutorial that shows you six ways to increase your website speed. Just follow the tutorial, follow the video. That will take care of all of those problems. And in combination with what you're doing with the surfer fixes here, uh, I mean, it's just a win, 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 win strategy, right? Take care, take care of these surfer fixes first, pull it through Google Search Console, then apply the learnings from my uh, site speed tutorial. I will here include video. the link to the, to the um, tutorial in... in in yeah, the you're going to see fantastic, fantastic results. I assure you of that. Um, That's great. So That's great. I, I really feel like it will bring a lot of positive impact to the Lions website, to the Lions business. Yeah, and honestly, look, this, this tutorial is showing you the three ways, right, to do it. If you've got a bit of money to spend, don't waste any time or effort. Just go and buy WP Rocket. I think it's like 50 bucks. And then go and get Short Pixel. I think you can pick it up for like 10 bucks. Right, set those two things up, and it will do absolute wonders for anything to do with site speed. You don't need any tech knowledge. It optimizes all of your Google fonts, your Google Analytics, your Facebook pixels. It does tons of stuff in just a couple of clicks. Um, literally takes minutes to set up, and the benefits you'll get from that will will continue to come for, for months and years to come from your site. Um, so this is the free way to do it. Um, there's, uh, I think, the ultimate setup. Um, in, in, in Liam's case, I, I would say that you want to go with the ultimate setup here and avoid all of the hassle. Just get it done right. You're a photographer. You make decent money, right? Well, probably not right now, but you made decent money. So 50 bucks on a plugin, 10 bucks on, on, on things, uh, on, on image optimization. It's not going to break the bank, but the benefit it's going to bring is, is tenfold, especially with this surfer audit right here. This is just like wide open for the taking. It's one of the reasons I selected it. Um, I think you're going to see the most benefit out of all of the people that we, we roast today. Um, so yeah, great opportunity. I, I hope you make the most, the most of it. So what was the thing that you mentioned after the WP rocket? Was that short pixel? Short, short pixel, yeah. 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 Now, WP Smush, the free WP Smush plugin compresses your images, right? Um, but these results you're seeing on my screen now, are after the images were already compressed with WP Smush. So w Short Pixel took already compressed images and compressed them by another 46%. And you can see there's some significant savings in, in the bandwidth there. On top of that, Short Pixel and WP Rocket have the WebP image format integration. Ooh, bugger. If you don't know what that is, um, it's a new format, image format created by Google. It doesn't work on iOS. Um, it only works on uh, Chrome and Firefox, um, but uh, it compresses the images even further. And with just one tick box for free, you can take care of that and deliver them. And it will automatically detect if the browser is capable of serving those images. And uh, if it is, um, it will serve them. This is the error that we saw here. 
Um, nah, why is no? Come on. So Liam says that the pandemic wiped out those weddings, and I feel for you, really. But you can count on me uh, with uh, sharing the audit with you. So I will send it over so you can work on it like without subscription. I'm happy to help you. Yeah, perfect. Well, look, um, many industries are feeling the squeeze right now in in, in a lot of respects, right? Um, A lot of industries have just vaporized overnight. So... Um, the best that you can do right now is make sure that you do everything you can to put yourself in the best position possible when things come back. Now, things are slowly coming back, um, but you want to make sure that those few leads that are out there and are searching are finding you. So use this downtime right now to improve your web offering. Make sure you improve your conversion rate, your call to action. Make sure all of those things are, are set. Google Analytics, make sure you're tracking how many people visit your site, how many people convert into leads and fill out your contact form, you know, and really optimize that rate and and, and, and get everything as dialed down as possible so that when everything comes back, you're in the best position to succeed. That, in many cases, is, is the best that you can do right now in, in a lot of industries. And uh, unfortunately, wedding photography, uh, yeah, <laughs> not... Not 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 a good good industry for for the virus right now. Weddings um, are back in Poland, but I guess that UK has a slightly different situation. Yeah, I don't know what the current status is, um, but uh, yeah, that's that's the best you can do, right? And look, you've got lots of room for improvement on the website, so it's not like you haven't got stuff to be busy with. So <laughs> okay, so let's get, let's get wrap it up. There, let's wrap it up with a question. That, right? uh, we have a question from Raven. Uh, how do you think Google Lens image search might affect this kind of audit process, especially for product website that might be a huge optimization needed to be done? Google image search? Google Lens image. Actually, I don't know what is it. I just follow the question blindly. Is, 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 is Google, Google Lens is when you look at an object and it recognizes it, right? Ah, okay. Is that what it is? Probably. I don't know. I'm guessing. The fact, the fact that I'm asking that question probably means I'm not well positioned to answer your question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I missed your, you know, I'll, first I'll, attempt. I'll, 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 I'll be, I'll be completely uh, honest with you. Um, however, um, the experiments I have done with images, um, I published a case study on. Duh, duh, duh. Um, with EXIF data, right? So you can find this if you come to my homepage, you go to SEO, I think it's an image of SEO, or on the YouTube channel, right? Uh, hidden ranking factor you're probably deleting. Now, as a warning, actually, um, if you're going to optimize your images and you're going to use uh, short pixel or whatever it is, by default, a lot of them strip your image metadata, right? So you want to make sure that you are not removing the image data and that you're using this tutorial to learn how to manipulate that image data in order to optimize your images. Um, there's not many image SEO guides that talk yeah. about EXIF data and all that embedded I have data. a clarification for the question. I have a clarification yeah. of the question. So it is about searching using images. Like, so like you, you put an image and ask Google, uh, find it. So if it's going to be a trend and if this process of probably related to content will affect that. So um, when you put that image into search, Google recognizes it as an object, right? Um, And then from that, it's going to have various terms, words, and phrases that are attached to that object, which it then uses to search into its database and pull out uh, a result. So if you can figure out what those, those entities are that it's associating with and then optimize your image in the traditional what I call traditional image SEO, file name, alt tag, title tag, and the text around it. And then also with embedding the EXIF data as well. And here it allows you to embed like description so you can use a lot of the different entities that are related. That, in my blind opinion, because I haven't done what you're asking me, but that is exactly how I would approach it. And I just measure and, and, and tweak from there. But reverse image search is not anything I optimize for. That's just... From my understanding of how Google processes things, that's how I would attack it. Thanks, man. So let's let's move to the poker side then. I'm really looking forward to it to it because it will be pretty competitive niche. 
Poker, poker, poker. Okay. So if any of you guys ever get the opportunity to play poker with me, I am going to dominate you for about the first 30 minutes. And after that, I get bored and I just start throwing chips around. And I'm usually I'm, I'm, I'm out in about 40 minutes. So <laughs> if you ever want to take any money off me, play poker. I don't even need to be drunk. Like, just <laughs> So you are not the tight aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> now we I, i'm just really good and focused for the first 30 minutes and after that i get bored i'm like oh, i want to go do something else um now i see i didn't attach the right side uh, don't worry don't worry I, I, do you remember can it, it can you recall it so, don't worry i got it okay got cool it. um so this is our next roast guy um we didn't set this result up right otherwise it'll be up here but here he is currently sitting down here in number 16. Now, uh, domain score zero, uh, content score 73, which is pretty high. Um, looking on the first page, we are seeing that, you know, domain score twos are ranking frequently, a one, another one, at the top of page two is a zero. So it's certainly within reach to rank for this keyword um so let's do a manual review uh we're gonna pick uh da, da, da. yeah that's a similar result that's a similar result what else did i note down here yeah okay so just before i look at the result if you're searching for a poker cheat sheet what kind of content are you expecting to see? Well, if I was the searcher, I would say I'm expecting what kind of figures uh, I can make with the cards I have, or probably a chances that I will get this figure uh, on the f like flop. Is it mm -hmm. correct? Right. So that that's my guess. Yeah, but you're expecting sheets of information that help your poker game, right? That will help me beat um, you. Yeah, yeah. So what I love about this site is right away, um, I love the branding, I love the coloring, I love the imagery, I love how you, everything up, up above the fold is really nice. It's attractive. It feels good. And as we look at the other sites, you're going to see that they're really weak in this department, really weak. But here above the fold is absolutely excellent until you scroll down and this is the cheat sheet oh god exactly right <laughs> and every single person that's searching for a poker cheat sheet that lands on this page and does that is going to react the same way oh god what's that you know um it's 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 it doesn't really offer anything right, right? It's my downloadable book. It, 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 it's just a list of tips, right? And um, not even good tips in, in my <laughs> play with bad players. Yeah, play with me, <laughs> obviously, to win. Like, not rocket science, you know? Like, yeah, and in my opinion, it's missing some important rules, like get everyone wasted before the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so to me, um, straight away, it just misses a mark. It's not giving you... Look, look at this. It's like, oh, yeah, amazing, beautiful. And then you give me that, like, come on, man. Is that not a catfish? Like, you have catfished me there. Like, um, coming down as well, like, how to play with the best bonuses. Oh, absolutely. I feel how to find <laughs> and play in soft games. What's that got to do with poker cheat sheets? Uh, what's this? It's just... LSD? What is it? It doesn't even explain what it is. It's sort of half blurred out. You can't read it. You can't see it. There's... And then just all this, just just poker hands cheat sheet, how to choose the right starting hands. Well, where's the cheat sheet? What's this? Like, it's why you shouldn't worry about three. What's it got to do with a cheat sheet? Like, it's it's so irrelevant. How to like none of it is 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 uh, is is good. It's just like loads of irrelevant things and it's like position cheat sheet so then it does move into delivering a cheat sheet but it doesn't 
all right, small bind, big bind, early position, middle position. It is probably position. it is probably semantically correct, but doesn't make any Great. sense. <laughs> Great, but what does that mean? What's the benefit? To, why do I want to be in a middle position? Why do I want to be in a late position? Like it's not a cheat sheet. It's a graphic that doesn't explain anything. And you can see they've gone to the effort of branding it. It's really nice. They've got a good graphics team, but the execution is not in alignment with with like who's going to share that graphic. You know, like it could be so much better with just a little bit more effort, right? Um, and coming down again, more kind of just irrelevant stuff like poker odds cheat. That's not a sheet. That's a table, <laughs> <laughs> right? And it's not even a table. It fits on a full 24-inch screen monitor. So how's that a cheat sheet? I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to like whack, whack that out of my pocket and have a look, am I? Like, <laughs> Imagine using it <laughs> at a poker game. Yeah, like, you know, there's... there's, there's there's no reference points. And then here we've got some others, but you get my point, right? Like, and then recently asked questions just thrown in. I guess you're using FAQ snippets here. Um, and that's great. Um, but we're, we're so way off the mark with the intent. And like I say, you catfished me right at the top. I was like, wow, this is great. Uh, and, 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 then, and then after that, it wasn't. Um, so this is the, the, the top ranking result. Clean, straight to the point. No way near as good at the top, in my opinion. No way near. This is many levels below. But look what they give me. A cheat sheet. Hmm. <laughs> An actual cheat sheet. And in my opinion, this isn't even a cheat sheet. It's just telling you what the hands are. So they're still kind of quite far away from the, the intent. Like, it's just the ranking of the hands. It's not really a cheat sheet, is it? Yeah, but Here, it's the most down. frequently asked question when, like, four amateurs are... You know, on the table to play poker, and is this yeah. figure higher than than the other? Okay, so then maybe the intent is you need a beginner cheat sheet and an advanced cheat sheet. Um, but again, looking down here, this just move into other cheat cheats, but they're still not really cheat cheats, right? They're just like graphics that don't really explain nothing, right? Um, so at the top of the page, yeah, it meets the intent. It gives you a cheat sheet. Um, but there's still a lot of room for improvement as we've, we've discussed, right? Uh, moving into Unibet, um, I'm going to assume that isn't opened by default and I clicked it by mistake. Um, kind of standard cookie cutter design, nothing special about it. It's not impact. Look at this. This is like, wow, brings you in, right? This is like, whoa, it's so busy. Where do I go? You know? Um, but they do deliver on some really badly formatted text and a cheat sheet. Um, not a very good cheat sheet, in my opinion. This is better. It, it's, it's much more clear when they've got the cards faded, but uh, they deliver, right? Um, and then all, it, all below is just explaining what the strong and weak hands are. That's it in text format. Um, probably to satisfy Google more than anything else. Um, pretty weak result, in my opinion. This, this, this black rain... Now, look at this. There is night and day difference between the designs of this site. This feels like an affiliate site, right? Like, you know it straight away. You're like, affiliate, right? You're like, free poker, you know, like, it's just obvious that affiliate site and no way near as well executed as this in terms of design. Um, coming down, um, the content is more of like a list of like <sighs> okay maybe some of these are cheats but it's very badly executed right very badly designed um it's unusable for me like and, and and then and then coming down here they've just banged the word poker cheat sheet into what are just tips really play at the right poker room yeah it's not <laughs> But what's that got to do with a cheat sheet, you know, like, um, is that, so it's, it's a lot of text, a lot of waffle, um, again, nothing really cheat sheety, um, formatting. It's not really that engaging, uh, unnecessarily long. Um, I mean, like, <laughs> it's, uh, we're looking for a cheat sheet. Not the ultimate guy to win at poker, you know? <laughs> um, 
so in, in my my opinion, this this resort is very weak as well. This guy, however, terrible design, terrible layout, uh, hurts the eyes. However, it has made a solid attempt at making some kind of cheat sheet uh, uh, with some actual cheats and things in it. Uh, but again, terrible design, uh, bad execution. And then they're, they're hiding the PDF version behind a social locker. Now, I love that trick. Um, it's something that you've probably seen used on my blog if, if you follow me for any amount of time. But putting downloadable resources behind social lockers is a great way to increase your search traffic and social traffic. Um, uh, I do this on a lot of review posts. Um, so what to, it does... To get a look over the competition. What it does is locker... So, um, basically he's got this cheat sheet this is the image it's uh -huh. low quality right but if you want the printable pdf version you got to share the page ah, on Twitter okay so we have to share okay yeah that's neat so um but but forget the bad design and everything else what he's doing is he's delivering a cheat sheet that matches the intent and then down here is an explanation of how to use the cheat sheet on top of that he's also offering a credit card sized version of starting hands uh, that you can download and print off. He's got the, the the execution isn't there, but he's got a much better understanding of the intent and what the person's looking for. Right now, we're going to a, a, a lot of waffle here, um, but you know the point is um, there's a this is amazing. This is not. This is not. This is not. This none of this is is, is good. Um, so, in my opinion, the 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 first I would redo the entire content piece in line with um, uh, the intent, right? And I would have a designer create some useful cheat sheets. And check this out, right? You, you can actually let me zoom in on this. You can actually print off a single piece of paper and fold it into an eight-page book. Let me see. So I would have a designer design a printable poker cheat sheet. First, you could have like an infographic version of it that's shareable for websites and, 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 and will really help. If, if you produce a really nice actual series of cheat sheet graphics, really well done, when you come to link building later, you're going to be fighting a downhill battle and not an uphill battle. So, like this mini book template, like you can't see it really here, but um, you can get a designer to, to 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 design it, and then look, you do a single cut, you fold it like that, and it's a little tiny book that fits in your wallet, credit card size. So, I'd I'd have a designer do something like that. I'd have them make a really nice or two or three different shareable infographics. I'd totally redo this page um, based around that. The text would purely be. This is introducing X poker cheat sheet. This is how it works. This is the other poker cheat sheet. This is how it works. Um, social share locker, download your printable version. Here's a little video of the printable, just a little video you record on your phone showing the book that, 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 that they get. Make it an opt in thing. You can complete, once it's opt in and you've got people opting in for your poker cheat sheet, then you can remarket to them a lot of affiliate stuff. Like you're leaving so much money and opportunity on the table with this content here, right? So that's my roast of the on page. Um, pretty serious roast because um, I'm essentially telling you to delete and start again. Um, but build it with a social locker that allows people to get something if they share. Build it with uh, a lead magnet where people have got to opt in to get the credit card size printable one, you know? And then you can remarket to them over and over it also makes you link building uh, a downhill battle as you go out and pitch sites especially in this niche and especially if this is what you're up against um there's just so many wins here from from just doing it right um and you've obviously got a talented graphics team because um you know they're creating custom graphics like that it's just it's, they just need a bit more direction on the execution i think um so jumping into surfer um the result is where were you number 16 right so you really care about the people right when it comes to the visitor uh browsing your site uh i see the angle of satisfying them as much as they can yes 
Because otherwise what happens is a person comes on you. Let's say you go to all of the effort of ranking top 10, right? You've gone to the effort of content production. You've gone to the effort of doing the surfer optimization. You've taken care of site speed. You've done link building, which is, you know, cost time and money. Um, now you've broken the top 10, right? You've put all that work and effort to get to the top 10. Now you're there. You're moving up the page, but then you're not satisfying that user intent. So every time someone hits your page, you go back. This is super important. That hurts you. This is super important. That hurts you. Instead, what you want to do is have someone come on your page, socially share it, sign up to your email list, and, you know, engage with you, you know? There's so much value a user that can bring to you when they hit on your page, and the only value that's being provided at the moment is intent to press back. Yeah, like building something for real, just not like, just for sake of... Oh, what's this? Uh, uh, back, right? You know? And um, a lot of these results are, are, are missing that. Um So, yeah, making sure you've got that intent right undermines all of your other efforts if it's not right. Um, it, it's critical, absolutely critical. Uh, and like I say, the power of observation, Google is telling us what they want. So we can look at that. We can look at it with our human head and be like, right, well, what people actually want is a poker cheat sheet <laughs> and something that's usable, something um, that they can take the games with them it's got to be printable you know um don't put the don't put the cheat sheet on a black background it's going to use all of someone's ink you know white background um and then make the graphics that are shareable um you know you can go out and pitch people with your little cheat sheet infographic then people love it it'll get shared a bunch and and right now all of those opportunities don't exist because if not you've not the Whoever owns this site has not put themselves in a position of opportunity with the content that they've created. So they've got a much harder battle when it comes to ranking. They've got a much harder battle when it comes to link building. Why? It's unnecessary. Yeah, that's, that's just, super just, just, just do it right. Just do it right and make it a downhill battle instead of an uphill battle. Um, and there's lots of opportunities here to turn this into a downhill battle. Unfortunately, it means deleting and starting again. Um, but once you do that, looking at the results... Um, and looking at the other opportunities it brings, email subscribers, social shares, affiliate clicks, and everything else, the shareability, the linkability, boom, done, right? Yeah, I, I, I imagine being in the number one, top three for this, this kind of keyword is money in the bank, especially if it's converting into email subscribers. So that's, that's, that's my roast. Absolutely. Um, with that said, um, you know, let's remember here, the, we, Similar sites with similar domain scores are ranking on the first page. Sites with lesser domain scores are ranking on the first page. So there's a lot of opportunity, right? Look at this zero at the top. There's 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 there's, there's lots of opportunity here. Um, so redo the content. Come back here. Come into your audit. Refresh it, and um, you know we can already see here at the current content. It's wildly under optimized. So, I mean, adding 15 to 34, adding 23, adding 9 to 33, like um, doing all of that is going to take time, right? There's probably. So, it shows that the keyword is a little bit spammy, isn't it? Like the poker everywhere, really frequently used, the cheat sheet. Yes. Used 41 times, poker cheat sheet is an exact keyword. So, that's that's crazy number. Uh, at least for yeah. me. Yeah, but 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 it's it's only asking to add nine, and we can probably do that naturally without being too spammy. Yeah. Um, now, my 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 point here is um, that probably to integrate all of this because the changes are so wild and varied, it's going to take you like it's probably about three hours work here for someone, right? No more than that. But in the same in the, in the same three hours you you could just start from scratch and you can use the surfer seo content editor you can have it include all the terms and you can write it um from scratch with all the terms perfectly optimized from zero and given that the intent is so far away right now this is what i do I use a con and we use a content editor in um, in the team. We we'll create the content spec. In the content spec, we give them this shareable link, and then the people write the content in here. 
obviously the content editor goes through and makes sure that, that it's optimized perfectly, what questions do it involve in, include and, um, and everything like that. So rather than spending three hours here, spend three hours here, rewrite it, get all the content right, and then update that with the new imagery, the new graphics, the new cheat sheets. Um, you know, if you could produce that credit card foldable one, I mean, win, 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 right? Easy win all the way through. Um, also here we had, uh, issues with site speed, uh, time to first buy and the load time. Um, again, nearly every single client or site that I look at has this issue. It's very rare that I find a site that doesn't have the issue. And, um, you know, let me ping this over page speed insights. And there's a specific issue I want to show you here. So in web page test, 11 second load time, real bad. Um, here, right? Check this out. We got, these are all Google fonts files. So we're using the Rubik font. We're using the Poppins font. We're using the Roboto font. We're using Rubik again, Rubik again, Poppins again, Roboto again, Roboto again. And lots of use of uh, Facebook Pixel, lots of use, you know, of um, Google Fonts, probably unnecessarily. You could probably remove that to, to just two. I suspect that you're probably using one font here, a different one there, a different one there, a different one on those buttons, um, maybe different ones, fonts here. Just get your font fonts under control, right? And um, once you have got your fonts under control, um, you can then go into the increased website speed tutorial again. You need it. Um, again, you can go through the freeway, but if, if, if you just want to get it done, WP Rocket includes a feature of um, Google fonts optimization. Um, and, and that's a big issue that you've got here. Um, yeah, and they got the Google fonts optimization there, which all the free plugins are missing. Um, and that will benefit you greatly. So. That's a roast. That's a pretty significant roast. It, 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 it's, in, it's building from the bottom to the top again, but to a position where you're going to be able to extract a lot of value from visitors in terms of social shares. It's going to make your link building a lot easier, email signups. Um, I think in terms of profitability, this is the biggest opportunity in the entire roast. In terms of the amount of dollars you'll make by making those changes, this is by far the one that will be the most profitable if they apply those changes. Yeah, that's full of golden nuggets for the owner of this website. Uh, I'm really happy about how it turned out, uh, except of those issues we had at the beginning. But we have some <laughs> uh, some some questions uh, before we wrap it up. So um, the first one is about uh, if you use uh, the tool for all your top listings, and apparently you do, like you said, when it comes to the content editor and the audit. Okay, well... Let me tell you a little bit more about how we use Surfer in our regular SEO process, right? Um, all content that is newly written is written with the content editor. Did I close it? Right. With the content editor. Everything's written in this to start with, right? And then we publish it. Then what we do is, uh, well, actually, um, anyone listening will benefit from this. We have this quick win SEO process. It's a... Seth, where essentially what we do is we look at the keywords ranking on the first two pages and based on where we, they're ranking, the specific tasks that we do. One of the specific is Surfer SEO optimization. Every 90 days, we, we rerun this process, find a list of quick win SEO opportunities, and nearly always we run them through Surfer. And nearly always, we see increases in search results. Uh, Surf is just one of the things. We do featured snippet theft and a couple of other little bits. doesn't cost any money to do. Um, but that's the, the quick win SEO process um, that we run every 90 days. And Surfer is uh, an integral part to that. Um, we're continuously optimizing content with Surfer. As it's coming up, the search results, you know, you publish something today, it's in rank number 50. Over the next few weeks, it kind of naturally climbs if you've got domain authority. Once it brings into them top two pages, bam, we're hitting it with a Surfer optimization to take it up the rest of that, that those last miles, you know. Um, so Surfer is 
heavily integrated into our creation process and then our ongoing processes when we're looking for opportunities and quick wins. So uh, Viola Eva mentioned recently on the Darryl Rosters podcast that in SEO, now we don't have just three foundations like we had like a backlinks, on-page and technical SEO, but the fourth is uh, staying aligned with the current demand of the algorithm and the users. And this is pro- probably... Uh, the best answer for this progressive optimization every 90 days. I love it. Yeah, yeah, we, we run that quick win SEO process every 90 days um, because a lot changes in 90 days. And uh, yeah, we, 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 we see positive benefits from it. And uh, it means that you're always looking at the SERPs that are in the, the, the quick win SEO process specifically targets keywords ranking from 2 to 19. So it means you're always on the ball when it comes to intent or shifts in change and things like that. Great tip. Uh, Umer is asking if you can share any of your affiliate sites for inspiration, but I guess that the best example is your uh, matthewwoodward.co.uk as you do quite a lot of um, affiliate there. So I shared several screenshots about six years ago that allowed someone to re- reverse engineer one of my sites. <laughs> um, never going to happen again. Um, in terms of Uh, general affiliate site advice there is the may update is the first update i ever had where everything increased usually i have winners and losers right but may everything won and the only commonality i have between those sites is that google thinks they're real businesses and people so what most affiliates do is they put in and let's have a little look admin (laughs) so so um most affiliate sites are what I would consider anonymous spammers, right? Um, even though you're not an anonymous spammer, Google's got no way of tying the site to a real legally responsible entity, whether that be a business or a person, right? Um, most affiliate sites don't do that. So in my opinion, Google just looks at you like an anonymous spammer because you are. You're anonymous. What value do you bring? Ciao, right? And as we've looked at the search results, certainly since from the medic update, we're now seeing more and more real businesses and sites in the search results and less and less Amazon sites, right? But it's <clears throat> it's not because they're, they're Amazon sites. It's because when you look, people aren't real. So, um, you know, you've got to be publishing your business information. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> in some countries you're legally required to publish certain information, such as your business name, the company registration number, the address, the phone number, right? Most affiliates miss that. Yeah. On top of that, um, you know, an affiliate site is a real business. It should have a Google My Business listing. It is a business. So that means you need an address and phone number. And that makes you real. It's a very easy way for Google to, re- to to understand you're a real business where people go to work every day, they work, and then they finish work every this day. This is gold. Right? This is gold. Pure gold. Most, most affiliates miss that, completely miss that, but it's absolutely essential. Now, how do we get over this if, uh, uh, affiliate sites? Well, um, what I do is I find someone that kind of looks like they might fit the part, um, and then I literally just say, look, I'm going to pay you a hundred bucks and you've got to come. We're going to take some photos and you're going to be the face of the site, right? Um, I get them to sign a release form. We do usually an about the website video. We usually do an about the person video, just quick shoot, like 30 second, 40 second videos. And we also record a answer phone message that we set up with call rail. So if someone calls, they get the voice of the person, right? Um, all of these things then make you real in Google's eyes, even if you're not. Um, I I went to the very first Black Hat World uh, conference in 2013-14, and there was someone there who was presenting that the very first thing the manual review team look at when deciding whether your site is genuine or not is they are looking for a picture of either the business or the business owner or the team that runs the business. If you're missing those things, then you're in trouble, right? Now, a lot of people use the 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 um, does this person exist site? I, does this person really exist to generate images? 
for sure they're doing some secret watermarking where uh, it's easy to reverse engineer in, in maybe the Google lens search that they're all generated, right? For sure, they're doing some kind of watermark in there. So be careful how you use those. It's much better to just go find a real person and be like like a student or someone that looks like they fit the bill or, you know, if you're doing a legal or money site, someone male mid 40s, something like that, and just pay them a little bit of money, have them sign a release form. They're the face of the site some images, some videos, and that gives you all that authenticity you need. Address, phone number, Google My Business listing. Make sure that you're complying with all the legal requirements of the country that you're targeting. Um, and that's it. That is, um, while I wouldn't like to show you any of my affiliate sites, um, even if I did, you wouldn't know they were me. You would have absolutely no clue whatsoever. And neither would Google. And Google would think that they're real businesses because they are the signals we're sending to Google. And they're the signals that most affiliates fail to send because they're treating their affiliate sites like affiliate sites and not like businesses. So that's that's what I can tell you about affiliate sites right now. Super cool. <laughs> Super cool. Thank you for that. Um, there is, and I, I can't see the chat. How can I see the chat? Give me a link. Um, oh, I have some questions in here. Come on. I don't know. Find me some questions. Uh, let's say I see it in the studio, but you could probably uh, open uh, YouTube uh, and see it there. But actually, I'm reading all the questions uh, we get, so okay. it's not that bad. Uh, however, there is one question, and it's actually to me, so I will just do it real quick. So, how do we calculate the domain score? uh do we get the backlinks from the others no uh we crawl for backlinks as well but it's just you know uh not the way as the ahrefs do or SEMrush. we crawled this some time ago we can do it but it's uh, just uh to uh find out if you are uh, playing with monstrous authority sites or small sites uh like moderate quality sites so it's our data but obviously is not that up to date and that accurate as the others that's why the scale is only from one to ten <laughs> so you don't think too much about it uh, so 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 that's it we we had uh another question that's the last question i will probably uh have so it was about uh different factors different factors values uh, for different positions in the same setup so i can imagine you were asking about many outliers in many directions for the same uh, query and how would you deal with it if there's so much mixed intent mixed uh like basically mixed intent that's that's the okay yeah if if, if there's mixed intent right now Let's let's just make it simple. Let, let's say let's say there's nine results. There's not there's ten, but let's say there's nine, and three of them are list posts, three of them are e-commerce category pages, and three of them are home pages, right? And each one of those are addressing a different intent. One's looking for a best list of the products. One's looking at the home page as the service provider or product provider themselves um, that come and install the products in your home, and the e-commerce site are the people that sell you the product. Right, there's mixed intent. Um, the best way to deal with that is just make sure that you are within one of the categories of intent that Google's showing. So, um, that's when there's mixed intent, that's the best that you can do is make sure that you're aligned to one of the intentions that Google's showing. If there's any kind of indication that, all right, 50% is this intent. And 20% is this intent and 30 is this intent. All right, hit the 50, right? Um, follow the output. Google's telling you what they want. So just give it to them. Um, but with mixed intent, just make sure you are at least one of those intents and preferably the one that's in the number one spot. <laughs> so what, what I would do in this situation is probably switch the keyword uh, to, to have more homogeneous intent because like, like you said, you have 33% for this and the third for this and another third for this then it means that there is only three spots for your intent so you are fighting with three instead of fighting with ten which will be much harder than you know trying to overtake one of those top ten websites so it's like fighting for the top three uh basically yeah 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 um but that, that's that's the best you can do really and we still have over 30 uh, people watching us uh, 
even if it's almost two hours already i'm super thankful <laughs> and uh there are some uh comments about your passion and love for seo that is visible from miles so yeah big up yeah yeah thank you <laughs> and uh you just said two hours and that that reminds me i'm now officially 13 minutes late for my next meeting <laughs> <laughs> okay that's so, how it uh, goes let's wrap it up then okay I guess I missed that one already. I don't know. I'll see. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, look, look, look. All of these sites that we looked at today, they all suffered from similar issues. First of all, from a, a, an on-page issue, just looking at the design, a lot of the time the intent wasn't there, right? Or it was there, but it wasn't right. We're seeing continuously uh, weaknesses in text flow, readability, how information's presented, design, you know, those were pretty consistent across everything that we roasted today. It's something that we touched on a lot. Also, site speed as well. Very, very, very important. So quick and simple to fix, but it will give you such a big benefit. And on top of that, looking through a lot of the surfer optimizations we featured today, all of them have huge, huge room for improvement. And each one that we featured, look, I went through lots of sites. These guys are going to get the biggest bang for the buck. But there wasn't a single site that I reviewed or keyword that wouldn't get a benefit from running this audit and integrating the advice. It's just that I picked the four that would get the biggest benefit and allow me to kind of talk you through different sites and, and site speed issues and other common things that we see. So if you submitted your site, um, please run it through the Surfer audit. You will get benefit. Um, but for the most part, Look at your competitors, see what they're doing well, see what they're doing bad, emulate it with your page, pay, a pen, pay attention to design, typography, how everything flows and fits together. Make sure you're matching that intent. Pay attention to site speed, get your optimization done in Surfer, and that's it. Thank you for wrapping it up so well. Thank you for all the answers. Uh, that was really a pleasure to, to have you on the show. Uh, I, I feel like people are really uh, impressed with, uh, with, with the way it, it turned out. Uh, I'm also, and yeah. probably my next roast will involve more manual reviews instead of just uh, playing with the data. This is super actionable for the people, and thank you for that. That that was just super. No cool. problem. Uh, yeah. So I will list all of the res the resources uh, under the video later. Uh, you will get the email tomorrow uh, with with the replay, so it will be all there. Thank you so much. Sorry for the technical issues we had at the very beginning. <laughs> and yeah, let's 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 make a, a bookmark in, in the calendars for the next month and see you then. Thank you very much, guys. Bye bye. Thank you.